All right, guys, welcome back to Front Seat Driver. My name is Jason, also with Vet Syndicate. I'm here with Tim from Dad's Garage. Today, we are gonna talk about his 2017 Arctic White C7 Z06 and how he got it under $70,000. And no, it doesn't have 100,000 miles and not something crazy like that. Guys just knows how to negotiate. Not a salvage title. Not a, not a salvage <laughs> title. Huge, huge, important point. Um, but we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna do a quick run around on his car. We're gonna talk about a couple of the mods that you've done and one that we were going to do today, but we had some uh, issues. So we're not doing it today. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started right now. So stay tuned. All right, Tim, so take us through a few of the mods that you've done to your car since you got it. Sure. So one thing we did was we blacked out all the marker lights. Yep. Ten of those, because you guys told me that I could not be in Vet Syndicate if I didn't do that. <laughs> Correct. So I bought a kit online that Steve had referred me to that yep. he used on his car, yep. installed those, um, did the PPF, of course, with Cody. Yes. Um, New image detail, Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, down north of Richland Hills, awesome, does beautiful work. Fantastic. So the whole nose is done, the headlights, uh, partial fenders, whole hood minus the Jake skull. Right. Because they don't like to change the color by It PPF will affect it. the mat. Yeah, yes. exactly. Um, most important thing that I've done by far is the tires. Yeah. The tires are a game changer. Had the, the stock, what, what Run are Run flat I've, tires. Yeah, 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 I can't remember the Pilot Michelin, Sports Pilot Sport, too, yeah. yeah. So had those on there, Sport. the car was, um, I don't know, just really, it, it rode like a tank. It rode so rough. And the other thing is- I resemble that remark. Yeah. It, the thing would like break loose the tires at 70. Uh -huh. it, and it was just, you know, you'd feel it do this. It's like, gosh, dang it. So anyway, decided to go ahead and replace all the tires because I damaged one. So I thought, right. okay, I'm just gonna replace all of them. And I went with the Continental Stream Contact I think they're a Sport DWS Plus or something like that, a big long name yeah. to the thing. And they, an absolute game changer. The, the traction's significantly better. The ride is like, like a, a million car. times better. Nice. It, it really makes the car, car just in every way perform better. Right. Now, maybe on a track, maybe you lose something, I don't know. But I don't know, but I know with my tires, I don't get a lot of grip. We'll be sitting at lights just spinning. All the time. Yeah. And these, it's it's night and day, the difference in the grip. And the tire price is awesome too yeah. on those versus the Michelins. Right. All right, Tim, so the next thing we want to talk about is the wrap that you did to the top of your car. Yeah, so the wrap that was on it was kind of a, a satin color, but mm -hmm. it w didn't have a carbon fiber finish at all. Yeah. So it showed scuffs, it showed the little dings, you know, where you take it on and off, the right. typical thing. And I went to my wrap shop and talked to him about all the different carbon fiber look materials. Yes. Uh, because I love the way that yours looks with that carbon fiber. And they came up with a whole bunch of samples. And I really like this one because it really looks like carbon fiber. It's not as durable as the ones like yours that have the clear on it. Correct. But I really like the look of it. Yeah. So we went ahead and wrapped it in that material. Um, at the time we did the mirrors yes. too but there's so many curves in the mirrors, the wind would catch it. And so I went ahead and ripped it off. That's why they but, make caps for those. Yeah. And when I had the Lamborghini, yeah. I wanted mine red. They were like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went ahead and kept the post wrap because yeah. I kind of like it. I don't know. Help it break just, up, give it a little contrast. Yeah. So I yeah. went ahead and kept that. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. looks cool. All right, Tim, go ahead and talk to us about the diffuser fins that you added to the back of your car. Yeah. So uh, that was another thing that y'all did too, was the diffuser fins. Yes. And I see the difference that it makes. It makes the car look lower, meaner, wider, yes. just by adding those fins. So we did grab the EOS diffuser fins. Um, really, really happy with the product. The, the quality was good. The fit was good. Yeah. Um, and really, they can really watch your video. Them. We did a whole video here. Uh, you did on your channel, Dad's Garage, for the installation where we, you, pulled the whole back rear fascia off to install yeah. these. And that is by far the best way to do this project, in my opinion, yeah, to get a yeah. best, the, you know, your best install. Yeah, because you guys did it by trying to weasel your arm back oh up in gosh. there. And I hear that was a real pain in the butt. So there. taking that whole bumper off was really easy. The yeah. hardest part was getting those marker lights out, out of the back. I remember those are a pain, but once you get those, it's piece of cake from yeah. there. And they look fantastic. They do look fantastic. Extreme and online store. 90 bucks. Yeah. 90 bucks. Yeah, so. they turned out fantastic. Action. 
All right, Tim, so go ahead and talk to us about the front splitter. Yeah, so the front splitter on the car is a fiberglass that came on the car. Yep. And when I got it, it had one spot that was damaged already. You could see where they kind of glued it back in where they probably knocked a piece out right. of it. It wasn't noticeable from up here, but I could see it and feel it underneath. Yeah. And then the winglets also, you could see where some of the clear was coming off of the winglets. So today was the day we were supposed to replace all that. Yes, we were. <laughs> But Corvette's um, coffee and installs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Supposed to happen this morning, but unfortunately, neither one of us thought to bring the rivet gun. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of came ill prepared for the job. Yeah. So that's going to have to be a different day, but yeah. it's still sitting in the car right now. But yeah, but, so they had the one. Was it this side where the ding is the, yeah. when you bought it? Yeah. And then I've hit a curb a couple of times, too. Yes. I wanted the 2LZ on purpose. And the right. main reason was for the front for cameras the camera. that yes. I don't ever use. So, so. <laughs> I can speak from experience. These things work really good. The time that they don't work, those two cameras, is when you don't use them. Or if yeah. like me, after I bought a brand new splitter, had Corvette World install it, me and Keith, yeah. and then immediately I hit a curb. Yeah. Immediately I yeah. left, I went to the gym, I was looking yeah. at my wheels, trying not to get you know the, the curb rash. Mm -hmm. Instead I got a little ding, but I had yeah. the um, slip low, so that actually prevented the amount of damage that I had. Yeah, these these things are so bl blunt that yeah. when you hit something, it's not like the car, it's going to push it underneath the car. Right. It's pretty much going to hit it and smash it. Yep. So I did that there. I hit a curb over here <laughs> and knocked the whole winglet pretty much off the car. You know, it's amazing how long this front end. You think it's you hard can to see judge. the end of it, but I feel like my opinion is you can see to about what you think. I'm thinking maybe is about right. That's pretty right much here. it. Yeah. And you so think you got you're two there. foot. Yeah, you got two foot more yeah. that you just don't realize is there. And, you know, I knew I was going to replace it early on. I didn't want to do it right away because yeah. I knew that I was probably going to have some of these little uh, right. episodes of running out of talent. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then that's pretty much the outside. Yep. We are going to go ahead and talk now about the car, what you, what they asked for for this car and what you ended up paying for it, which you and I work together a lot on this. As far as yeah. you would send me a lot of pictures, yep. you were asking a lot of questions, you know, coming from a scat pack. Um, and uh, you did your research 100%. That was a huge thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, we can go ahead now and talk about, you know, all the details of that transaction because I, I was yeah. a part of a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I asked you to come to the dealership with yeah. me the day because I want you to drive the car yeah. because I don't know. You know, if it's a new car, it's one thing, but being a used car, I don't know what noises you should hear with, right. with a Z06, how it you drives. know, with the Z7, how it drives. You know, yeah. there's some obvious things, like we could feel the brake pulsation. Yes. You know, we could feel that when we drove that it. That was very, very obvious. Yeah, exactly. But there's just some things, certain noises and things that you just don't know. So right. I wanted somebody with experience driving these every day, or, or at least quite a bit, to go drive the car too. So. Um, you know, really you start with the whole transaction, the way that I prepare for buying a car. And, and usually the salespeople either love me or hate me at the end of the right. deal. If they sell me the car, they love me because I'm straightforward and I don't play games with them, but I expect the same out of them. But really preparation is a big piece of it. So knowing what the car's value should be, having your financing lined up ahead of time is huge right. um, and we can go into to more of that i guess but um you know if you already have your rate from a credit union or whatever you know and say you have a you know 1.9 set up right and they hit you with a 3.9 you know what the number should be right. so you can use that to negotiate with them car dealers want to finance the vehicle because they make a percentage off the total loan so they may make more money off the financing than they actually do right off of the profit on the car. So they want to finance that car. So use it as a negotiating tool. You know, go in prepared. That's the key thing. Right. With that. So what was the actual sticker price on this car? So they had it listed for 74.5 okay. is what they had it listed for. Right. Which I thought was was pretty fair. It was a mm -hmm. pretty going rate. And there was 20, 28, 20, 28,000 28, miles. 28, miles. Okay. Right. Um, but they did a couple of things that, that really hurt them in the process. You mm -hmm. remember we showed up and the car was not even washed. Correct. 
one of the tires was flat. flat, had 20 pounds in it because it had a cracked rim. Shocking on a Z06. Believe it or not, <laughs> there's an issue with Z06 wheels cracking. I'm sure no one's heard this, but that, right. that is true. <laughs> so they really weren't prepared. Right. I mean, you know, they were not prepared with the car. So that hurt them right off the bat. Right. That's probably why. So you pounced. <laughs> well, it gave us an opportunity to negotiate because they probably lost people that lost interest. They don't even have it prepared for me to drive. They had to go put air on the tires. Yes. And they told us that they were going to replace the rim. We knew that was going to happen. So, uh, but it's just an opportunity. You got to look for those opportunities. Right. And then there was a couple of, I know there was a fee in there because I know yeah. we were sitting at your house and you guys were texting back and forth, you and the salesman. There was some fee of some prep fee that you're yeah. like, I'm not paying that. So That's... while you're still there even, yeah. I had them bring me the, the deal out. And I already mm -hmm. had another piece of preparation. You got to know going in, what am I going to pay for this car? Right. You can't go to the car dealership and let them negotiate with you. You've got to know what your number is before you go in. Because right. if you don't, you know, they're going to say, well, you know, you offer them 73 and they say, well, you know, 73, five, you know, and then you can just waffle your way up into spending more money. But yeah. don't do that. Go right. in knowing what your number is going yeah. in. So, so that's a key. Know your number going in on what you want to pay. Cause, and man, make sure you stick to it. And stand firm. Exactly. Stand firm. That's the yeah. key. That's the key. So, so they bring the paper to us, and then the car is not 74.5 anymore. They right. had a $3,500 dealer prep fee. Mm -hmm. And I told them, well, I'm not paying that. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, everybody pays that. I said, no, not me. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm done. And they said, you know, well, give me a minute. Let me talk to my manager. Come back. You know, it's 2,500. I said, no, I'm not paying for it. And give me the keys. Let's get out of here. And I said, give me the key. I said, let me have the keys. We're, you know, we're done talking. And then they don't want to give me the keys. And I said, give me my keys. Yep. And they gave me the keys. We walked away. And then over the next 13 days, yeah. I'm negotiating still over the phone or over the texting with the salesperson. And long story short, boom, under 70 grand. Yep. And we got the deal done. And I will say, I was a little uncomfortable because I, I'm not that hard of a negotiator. <laughs> you do have to be a hard negotiator, but if you do, you can get these kind of Saved deals $8, done. dollars Yes. And, you know, I got the car under market value. Yep. And you know, the car was like pristine. Yes. You know. Oh, it was for fantastic. 28,000 mile car. It's yeah. absolutely pristine. Yeah. So. so that's one of the lessons we learned from today is you got to be willing to walk away, you know, to make that deal happen. Yep. Uh, they'll usually... If they can make it happen, they're going to come back and they're going to deal with you. So um, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank Tim from Dad's Garage. Make sure you go and subscribe to his channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing. And I guess that's going to do it for this week. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You guys have a great week. Peace.